Hello. So, next video in the Writer's Guide series is on magic. And something a bit controversial for me, because I've never been a huge fan of magic and fantasy, which is kind of like saying I'm not a huge fan of water and I'm a sailor. Um, but it still rings true to me. Like, I, I'm not a huge fan of magic, and, I've, and for ages I've tried to sort of put that into words and why I, why I'm not a huge fan of it why why am why why do I get exacerbated every single time it comes up and I figured it out um, I prefer a different style of magic to what is in most uh, most fantasy these days and RPGs and all sorts um, but we'll get into that as we get into the video anyway as we get into the, into the little lesson here but it's magic hard and soft in a post Tolkien world. So I hope you enjoyed the, the mini lecture, and uh, let's get on with it, shall we? So, what does it do? Well, in a word, magic does anything. It can be anything you want. It can be a resource that lets you put runes into weapons. It can be um, something that lets you heal people, but nothing else. It can be something that holds the world together, a la Final Fantasy VII. It could be... It uh, could be a whole stream of consciousness that, that, that runs through the world that makes sure that everyone's memories goes back to the core of the world, blah de blah de blah It can be anything. That's the main strength of magic. Um, magic is essentially something that fantasy never gets away from. It's something that, for, for better and worse, um, you look at things like um, A Song of Ice and Fire, you know, that, that was a that was a book that was never meant to have any magic in it. Um, you know, George Martin started a, a Song of Ice and Fire, started their Game of Thrones in the late 80s, writing it and then re redoing it, redoing it all the way through the, 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 the early 90s. Um, it was never supposed to have any magic in it. It was supposed to be a medieval, the medieval fantasy 12 Caesars, um, based on historical, you know, fact and things like that. Um, and more magic crept in as time went on. Mainly because writers can never seem to um, they can never seem to resist putting in magic. They always they always want to have a go, sort of a thing, um, which is completely fine. And and I, I think it's great, especially when it's done well. And the problem is, it's not always done well. Sometimes it's done pretty poorly. And we're going to explore that in the in the lessons going forward. But in a, in essential terms, magic can be absolutely anything you want. Uh, number two. Uh, magic can be a flavouring of your setting or story, a tool used to permeate, permeate different parts of the world, or a system that literally makes the world go round. So, as I said before, it can be anything. You know, it can be um, something like you know we use magic to play cards, and that's it. Or it can be literally without magic, the whole world falls apart. Literally, the the planet breaks apart. You know, it can be anything. Um, there are three main styles of magic that I've seen. Um, the two overarching uh, methods that we're going to be looking at are methods, whereas there are three styles that are within those methods. Okay. Uh, first one is backgrounds. This magic that's in the background, it's not really taking up a lot of the story. It's mainly in the background, it's mainly doing its own thing, it's mainly just sticking around, adding flavour to little bits and bobs here and there. And that would be something like Middle Earth. Middle Earth is mainly about the people who are in the world, rather than magic. Tolkien never really uses the word magic, which is, which is very, very strange. Um, if you ever see The Lord of the Rings, or you've read The Lord of the Rings, um, I don't think he uses magic at all, the actual word, or, or even a word for magic, like channeling or binding or anything like that. He, ju he, just, he just... It's a natural force of the world, so people don't call it magic, which is very clever. And it's one of the things that Tolkien did that no one else has really done since. Everyone else calls it something. You know, they call it binding, or yeah, as I just said before, channeling, or or just magic. Yeah. In a world where magic has existed all the way along, people wouldn't call it magic because it's not something that's weird. It's just there. It's there all the time. And that's one of the genius parts of Middle Earth. One that's very rarely sung about because a lot of people like to just focus on the Ring and Frodo and different things like that, whereas actually for me, the way that Tolkien treats magic is probably the best archetype example of magic in fantasy, because it's very realistic. Mental things happen, yes, 
But this is a world in which mental things happen. Um, second one is World Foundations. That's essentially... Um, it's essentially this setting would not exist without magic. Yep. So, um, when I said before, like, say, say, say the live stream in Final Fantasy or um, the, the far plane in, in um, Final Fantasy X, uh, without those systems of magic, the world falls apart and ceases to exist in a very literal way. Whereas in Harry Potter, it's a setting. So, so the, the setting of Harry Potter is in the wizarding world would not exist without magic. It's the foundation of the world. It's the very fabric of the world. It's the reason why anything is happening in the world. Um, and also in Harry Potter, by the way, they very rarely use the word magic. Okay? They very rarely use that word. It is used once or twice. I, I, I you know, I've got my, my missus uh, recently reread uh, the whole series, and I've read the series before. Um, and obviously, I've seen all the movies. It's very rarely used, the word magic. It's just a thing that is in their world that's normal to them, okay? The only people who use magic, the word magic, in Harry Potter are muggles. Which I think that's a really, really clever piece of world building that J.K. Rowling did. Not a huge fan of her writing, per se. I um, think she's kind of average as a writer, but... In terms of this one detail, she nailed it right on the head. That's exactly how it would work. And you have the system, the final one. Which is Star Wars. So the system, the system is essentially uh, what most magic um, settings are these days, and that you have a world and you have a magic system that goes into that world. And so you have um, you know, Brandon Sanderson's books. Most of his books have a world, and then there's a magic system within the world that does stuff. Um, you know, uh, Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time. You know, it has magic in it. But it's not the be-all and end-all of the world. If you stripped magic away from um, uh, the Wheel of Time, the world would still be there. Things would still work. It would just be a lot different than what it is. Um, so that's, that's the thing that most people do. Um, I will tell you now, every single fantasy RPG role-playing game that you've played on PC or Xbox or whatever, they have a magic system in there. They don't have a background or a world foundation magic system in there. They have the actual system in there. When I say Star Wars, if you took the Force away from Star Wars, Star Wars would still exist. Okay, um, The Force is a system of magic within Star Wars that only a certain number of people can use and it's also a really, really, really good example of a hard and soft magic system melded into one. And that's what we're going to find out um, as we go on through the through the lecture here. So. Soft magic. Alright, first first type of system within magic. Okay? We've seen the three implementations of magic. Now we're gonna see the actual um, the way the systems are formed. But when you've selected how, what kind of magic system you're gonna have, whether it's gonna be a background, whether it's gonna be a whole world, or whether it's gonna be just a system within that world, now you've got to decide what kind of magic is it's gonna be. And the first type of the two is soft, so um, with soft magic, magic has little little rules. It can be used and, and uh, it can be used and 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 I am a writer. I swear to God, and bent, broken in whatever ways you like. Um, it gives you a fantastic flexibility, and you're able to push and pull what is and is not possible to suit your own whims. So, uh, it, yeah, with soft magic, all the rules are removed. Um, one day you can use magic to levitate, and another day you can't. Because, you know, things are happening that, that stop the guy from levitating this time. You know, sometimes you can use the magic to heal people, but sometimes the magic just fails you and goes away because it's expedient for the plot for it to go away and for it to not be there anymore. You know, this soft magic is very easy. It can be bent, it can be broken, it can be torn apart, it can be given rules, rules can be taken away. And essentially, you do whatever you'd like. Um... Soft magic is actually Harry Potter. A lot of people don't understand that. A lot of people think that Harry Potter has very formulaic rules. It doesn't. Um, Harry Potter in, in itself, uh, the magic within Harry Potter doesn't really involve rules. You can, yes, there is a school there in which there are rules, but the actual magic itself, the actual system of magic, anyone can pretty much be anything that you want. You know, there's nothing limiting the author in what can and can't happen with magic. There are never any rules put in place of magic can do this and it can't do this. Okay? The only time it ever does that is that you can't really bring people back from the dead. Yeah? 
But that doesn't make a hard magic setting. That is still soft because you see magic in Harry Potter doing vastly different things with very little explanation. That's because it is a soft magic system, okay? Um, the great thing about it is it gives you really good flexibility. So when you're writing your story and you need something to happen or you need magic to do something within the story, it's very easy to just get on with it and uh, write in the soft magic setting and just have these things happen. Um, you've got to be a very good writer to make sure that it doesn't seem contrived, but still, we'll cover that in a second. Um, it gives you the ability to push and pull so you can do whatever you want with it. You, it's like a big bit of clay. You can make the magic in the world, do whatever you want. And... And it's your world. So essentially, um, soft magic is your raw imagination. That's how I, I always see it. When you're writing uh, magic and you're using a soft magic system, that is your raw imagination, unshackled. You can do whatever you want. And you are doing whatever you want. Sort of a thing. Um, it keeps the reader guessing as well. Anything could happen. So if, if you've got magic that can do absolutely any, anything, absolutely anything could happen. Anything could be around the corner. Um, you know, um, as long as you, you're, you're writing it in a good way, um, when people don't just go, oh, here we go, right, okay, but bet you something magical happens that's going to get them out of this situation again. As long as you're not doing that, as long as the magic basically is a, is a hindrance and a help, which is how it should work with soft magic, then anything could happen. It adds to the suspense of the, of the setting itself. Um, last two things are the biggest drawback with soft magic as well, which is why I don't really employ it in my settings and which is why I don't advise you to generally. Um, it can remove the stakes... If you can wave your hands and introduce a convenient cop-out in the form of magic. So, um, a cop-out is, you know, essentially your, your, your main character's backed into a corner and there's, there's no way out, but they, all of a sudden they fart and a dragon comes out of their fart gases and kills all the bad guys and then he just walks away. That's terrible. Yeah? But that's soft magic. That's soft magic. M magic can just, can just happen at any time. Um, you know... A good soft magic system would be Harry Potter, yeah. Bad soft magic system. Well, I don't. I, you don't really see it very often. But I, I, fan fiction is one. You know, people who like writing Mary Sue's is another one. Um, the new, the new Star Wars movies uh, ha, is is soft magic, right? Uh, generally, with Star Wars, the harder you write, the force, the cooler it is. Okay. So the more restrictions there are, the Old Republic was very like that. The Old Republic was very, the Force can do this, it can do this, it cannot do this, and it cannot do this. And you have different tiers of Force users and different people who can do different things. You have Force Lightning. And not everyone could do Force Lightning, only Dark Side users can use Force Lightning because you've got to channel your aggression into this Lightning. Whereas, I, I don't be surprised that in, in the next Star Wars movie to have Rey doing Force Lightning for no reason. Um... Completely, I can completely see that coming coming about, um, because new Star Wars is soft magic, old Star Wars, especially the Old Republic, as in the video games and the books, hard magic. Okay, um, you know, if if you can, soft magic does give you that get out of jail free card, and some writers use it very lazily. They just play it all the time. Uh, Terry Goodkind is one of those writers. He just plays this soft magic card all the time because he can't write. And because he can't write, he just throws these characters into a situation, doesn't know how to get them out, and so just snaps his finger and says, It's magic! and gets them out. He's terrible, okay? He's awful. And don't get any of his books. He's awful. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I, if you like him, great. Um, please go ahead and enjoy. Um... I've been subjected to one of his books, and I read it all the way through, and I'm never getting those eight hours back. Um, but it can be used as well as a crutch to solve plot problems, like I've just said. Magic can be used in a very lazy way. It can be used in the good kind way of saying, meh, it's magic. Yeah, He waves his fingers, and the whole plot is resolved. That's not how you use magic. Okay? If you're going to use soft magic, be very, very, very careful. Hard magic. All right, so it's my favourite form of magic. It's hard magic. Um, magic has rules in hard magic. It has rules and restrictions. Not everyone, not everyone can use it, and even if they do, there are certainly drawbacks to its use. So think of um, in Warhammer Forty Thousand, the Psychers. Yeah, Psychers in Warhammer Forty Thousand. They're incredibly powerful. They're not so much powerful in the board game, in, in the tabletop board game, because that would be silly. But in the actual setting. 
these guys can like level continents with their minds if they want to. You know, if they're Alpha Class Psyker, they can snap a, a Titan in half, which is which is like a a, a city killing robot. They could just snap it in half, but like by just waving the hand. These guys are insanely powerful, but they also are probably getting you know seen to by demons quite a lot. You know, and the entire Imperium wants to kill them because they're very dangerous and because. Um, you know, they're they're technically mutants, so you know they need to be purged, and they, or they need to go and um, be sacrificed to the emperor, or they need to become grey knights and probably die during the training of it, and things like that. You know, it's it's being a psyker is is great in theory in one forty thousand, but in reality, it it makes you basically screwed. Unless you're one in a million person, you're basically screwed. That's a great way of doing a hard magic system. Um. And 140,000 is something we're going to discuss later on when I discuss the, how these two systems can merge, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. So, um, you know, in Dragon Age, for instance, um, when you're a mage in Dragon Age, you are very, very powerful, but you're also, again, susceptible to possession by demons. Everyone's afraid of you. Everyone wants to put you in these cloisters that you can never get out of, that sort of a thing. Um, you know, you're very restricted in your movement and what you can do. If you're a canary, you have your tongue cut out if you're a, if you're a mage. It's ridiculous, okay? So there are drawbacks to its use, all right? But in that there are there are tropes, and you've just seen two. You've seen one of them used by two completely different settings. Yeah, yeah. Mages are downtrodden because they're dangerous. Yeah, it happens a lot. You know, try not to do it because it happens all the time. Um, that's a drawback to hard magic, yeah? It, it, it leans into these tropes of fantasy very, 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 very well. Um, number two. Hard magic systems often give you a fantastic skeleton on which to build your world. If your magic has rules, it makes your world have a lot of depth, yeah? Generally, if you can give um, rules to your magic systems that actually have weight and consequence, it normally means that you're a very good world builder who's thought about how the magic is going to impact the world that it's in. And in doing that, you give your world more depth. Again, I've used this in previous lectures. If I can turn over a rock and I can see that there's stuff there underneath, I'm very happy. I'm like, yes, okay, there's history there, that's cool. If, if you show me magic and I'm like, oh god, here we go. This guy is going to be able to just like snap his fingers and things are going to be all fine. And then it doesn't happen, because there's a reason why it doesn't happen. That's great, because it shows that you've got limitations and you're actually thinking about the magic that's going into your world, which is fantastic. Um, number three. This form of magic, however, is incredibly difficult to control, maintain, and build. What I mean is not the magic itself. I mean you actually putting it in your setting. It's incredibly different, uh, difficult to build this magic system to control it and maintain it. Yeah? You must always take into account the limitations of your magic systems when you're writing the story. So, it, unlike... Soft magic, where you can just fire it once and forget about it later on and carry on writing. With hard magic, you've got to make sure you know exactly what you're talking about. Because the minute you stray away from your own rules and you stop backing yourself with your system in hard magic, it becomes soft magic. Which isn't what you want. Okay, That's not what you wanted. You wanted to do hard magic. So, be very careful. Be very, very careful. But hard magic generally is what I like doesn't have to be what you like. You can write whatever you want. But generally, I like hard magic. Um, so, the middle ground. You can uh, you can do both, as I've just said with Warhammer 40,000. Um, you know, the, the restrictions on magic and uh, psychers in Warhammer 40,000 is very uh, hard magic. It's very restrictive. You can Oh, you can't do certain things. You can't go to certain places. If you go around a certain person, they'll know you're a psyker and they'll try and kill you. That sort of a thing. But, the actual powers of a Psyker and Warmer 40,000 are very soft magic. You can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. Because literally the warp where magic lives in Warmer 40,000 is a place where anything can happen. It's an insanity place. It's a place where all human emotion melds and and creates weird rapey monsters. Okay? So, you know, it, it's a com combination of both. And in terms of, of uh, setting, so is Star Wars. For the most part, um, it's it, it's eighty percent hard in in the uh, <laughs> sorry eighty percent hard. It's eighty percent hard in the old republic and twenty percent soft. Okay, so you know, for instance, there are rules, there are things that Jedi and Sith canon can't do. But 
in terms of people being ultra powerful, they can break those rules. Okay, most of the protagonists in certain stories are so powerful in the Force in the Old Republic that they can break those rules. They, there are light people who can do Force lightning, for instance, and it, and you're told this person has darkness within them. They're Jedi, but they have darkness within them, so they can. They're so powerful they can push through and do Force lightning, a la Revan or something like that. Yeah. Um, so there are ways to to mix and match what you find to be. Uh, uh, hard and soft magic systems. Um, the best, probably the best um, example of which is in um, the Wheel of Time, I think, from what I read. Um, that's one of the has one of the best hard and soft magic systems in there uh, because they are totally separate and but they, and they very rarely intertwine. Yeah. So. It is possible to have different aspects of magic within the same world. For instance, it can have magic from two different sources. Heaven and hell are a good example. And these two forms of magic can act in different ways. So, yeah, obviously, you, know, you have the heaven is very uh, structured, and you can only do it in certain ways, you can be used in certain ways, whereas hell's like, ah, screw that, do whatever you want, son. Summon ten million demons, whatever. And then heaven's like, well, no, there are rules, there are strict rules. We got it. We can't do this without having this, and we can't do this angel having this without this angel doing this. That would be a good way to mix things in together. Okay, so be careful when using such a mix, as it can be overwhelming. And in mixing both, you are introducing a hard magic style. Okay, you need ironclad rules for how these two forms of magic intertwine. So if you're having two different magic systems that have you know, hard and soft, or if you have a magic system that is both hard and soft, in itself it becomes more hard. It becomes more hard magic because you need rules for who can and can't do things. Whenever you've got those rules, it's a hard magic system. That's just how it is. Um, obviously there are there are a lot of systems that are a bit of both. You know, There are some that are sort of more soft magic than hard. But have like a few rules here and there. I would actually class Harry Potter as one of those. It's a soft magic system, but it has a few hard rules in there of you know things that can and can't happen to certain people. Um, and it has you know very soft, but most of it is soft. You can do whatever you want with your magic as long as you're powerful enough to use and to manipulate the forces of magic. Um, see, I, I I would go for hard myself. I I I just I did prefer a hard magic system. But that doesn't mean that's what you have to do. You have to figure out in your setting what's best for you. But this is generally how magic is interpreted and is um, placed into fantasy fiction. If you've ever wondered if there are styles, if there are titles and um, themes for those t um, titles for those themes that you see in books, yes, there are, and you've just seen them. Um, so. Um, this is, these are the terms that writers generally use when they're going on about uh, magic and their settings and things like that. So, now you've had a good grounding in magic, it's time for you to go away and do your own writing and, and maybe tell me in the comments section what you think your setting is going to have. It's going to have a hard or soft magic system. If it is going to have both, which it probably will do, to be honest with you, as part of one system, what kind of percentage you reckon you're looking at? You know, where are you looking to place your magic system? Is it going to be really soft? If so, why? You know, what is it about your world that that makes a soft magic system applicable to that world? If it's going to be really hard, again, why? Why is it a hard magic system? Why do you need all these rules? Yeah? Let me know. And thanks for watching. That was magic. <laughs>